Deep in the Gobi Desert, in a facility that looks more like a space station than a power plant, Chinese engineers just achieved what nuclear scientists have been dreaming about for 70 years. On a seemingly ordinary Tuesday morning, their thorium molten salt reactor hit a milestone that sent shockwaves through the global energy community. For the first time in human history, a nuclear reactor successfully refueled itself while continuing to generate power. No shutdown, no cooling period, no massive industrial ballet of removing fuel rods and installing new ones. The reactor just kept humming along, producing clean electricity while continuously feeding itself new fuel. Think about that for a moment. Every nuclear power plant you've ever heard of, from Chernobyl to Fukushima, to the ones powering your city right now, they all have to shut down for weeks or months just to change their fuel. It's like having to turn off your car, drain the gas tank, and rebuild the engine every time you need to fill up. But China's thorium reactor? It's like a car that refuels itself while driving down the highway at 70 miles per hour. Here's where this story gets absolutely incredible. Traditional nuclear reactors run on uranium, specifically uranium-235, which makes up less than 1% of all uranium on Earth. Finding enough uranium-235 to power the world's reactors is like searching for diamonds in a beach full of regular sand. Thorium is the opposite. There's so much thorium on Earth that we literally don't know what to do with it all. Mining companies currently treat thorium as waste because there's been nowhere to use it. China alone has enough thorium reserves to power their entire country for 20,000 years. 20,000 years. That's longer than human civilization has existed. But here's the crazy part. Thorium can't actually power a reactor by itself. It's like having a pile of wet wood that won't burn no matter how many matches you throw at it. You need to transform it first. And that transformation happens inside the reactor while it's running. The reactor literally creates its own fuel as it operates. Chinese engineers discovered how to make this process so efficient that their reactor produces more fuel than it consumes. It's a nuclear reactor that grows more powerful over time, like a campfire that gets bigger every time you add a log. The breakthrough isn't just the thorium. It's the revolutionary way China designed the entire system. Traditional nuclear reactors are basically giant pressure cookers filled with solid fuel rods and water. The water gets so hot it turns to steam, but it's all trapped under enormous pressure. If something goes wrong, that pressure can explode outward with devastating force. China threw out that entire design and started from scratch. Their reactor uses molten salt instead of water, liquid salt heated to over 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. The thorium fuel dissolves directly into this molten salt, creating a thick, glowing liquid that flows through the reactor like lava. Here's the brilliant part. If the reactor overheats, the molten salt expands and actually slows down the nuclear reaction automatically. It's like a car that automatically slows down when the engine gets too hot. And if there's ever a serious problem, they simply drain the molten salt into underground tanks where it cools and solidifies harmlessly. No meltdown, no explosion, no radiation release. The laws of physics literally make it impossible for this reactor to have a Chernobyl or Fukushima-style disaster. But the most incredible breakthrough is how they solved the refueling challenge. Traditional reactors have to shut down because their fuel is locked inside solid metal rods. Removing these rods and installing new ones is like performing surgery on a patient. You can't do it while the heart is still beating. China's liquid fuel system changes everything. Since the thorium dissolves directly into the molten salt, they can add new thorium and remove waste products while the reactor keeps running at full power. It's like being able to change your car's oil while driving on the freeway. The Chinese team developed a continuous processing system that works like an incredibly sophisticated coffee filter. Fresh thorium flows in, waste products get filtered out, and the reactor never misses a beat. This single innovation eliminates weeks of downtime and makes their reactors dramatically more efficient than anything else on Earth. Let's talk about the scale China is planning, because these numbers are absolutely staggering. Their current test reactor produces two megawatts of power, enough to supply electricity to about 1,000 homes. That might not sound like much, but it's just the beginning. By 2030, China plans to have a 10 megawatt demonstration plant operational. That's enough power for 5,000 homes, but they're not stopping there. The ultimate goal is 100 megawatt commercial reactors, each one capable of powering 50,000 homes with zero carbon emissions 
and virtually no nuclear waste. Here's where it gets really incredible. China is planning to build dozens of these reactors, potentially hundreds. They're targeting their arid western regions first, places like Xinjiang and Inner Mongolia, where water is scarce and traditional power plants struggle to operate. Remember, these thorium reactors don't need massive amounts of water for cooling like traditional nuclear plants. They can operate in deserts, on mountaintops, even in underground facilities. China is essentially planning to turn their most remote and inhospitable regions into clean energy powerhouses. Other countries are watching China's breakthrough with a mixture of amazement and alarm. The United States pioneered molten salt reactor research back in the 1960s, then abandoned it for uranium-based reactors. Now, American energy companies are scrambling to restart thorium programs that have been dormant for decades. India, which has some of the world's largest thorium reserves, just announced a massive acceleration of their thorium research program. They're talking about leapfrogging directly to thorium reactors without building more traditional uranium plants. Even European countries are suddenly interested. France, which gets 70% of its electricity from nuclear power, is quietly funding thorium research projects. The UK is considering thorium reactors as part of their net zero carbon strategy. But here's the thing. China has a 10 to 15 year head start. While other countries are still drawing blueprints, China has a working reactor that's already producing power and proving the technology works. This breakthrough isn't just about clean energy. It's about economic power on a scale that could reshape global trade relationships. Countries that master thorium technology first will have access to virtually unlimited clean electricity. That means cheaper manufacturing, more efficient data centers, unlimited desalination for fresh water, and industrial processes that are currently impossible with expensive fossil fuel energy. China is already planning thorium-powered industrial complexes that could manufacture steel, aluminum, and other energy-intensive products at costs no other country can match. Imagine trying to compete economically with a country that has access to electricity that's essentially free and unlimited. The implications go even deeper. Oil exporting countries that have built their entire economies around fossil fuel exports are watching nervously. If thorium reactors can provide unlimited clean electricity, the global demand for oil and natural gas could collapse far faster than anyone predicted. The engineering challenges China solved to make this work are absolutely mind-blowing. Molten salt at 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit is incredibly corrosive. It eats through most metals like acid through paper. Chinese engineers had to develop entirely new materials that could withstand decades of exposure to this environment. They created special alloys that form protective barriers when exposed to molten salt. These materials actually get stronger over time, developing crystalline structures that become more resistant to corrosion. It's like armor that repairs and improves itself. The continuous fuel processing system required inventing entirely new chemical separation techniques. They had to figure out how to extract specific radioactive isotopes from flowing molten salt while maintaining exact temperature and chemical balance. One small mistake could shut down the entire reactor. Chinese scientists developed robotic systems that can perform these incredibly precise operations in an environment where human workers could never survive. These robots operate in temperatures that would melt copper, in radiation fields that would be instantly lethal, performing chemical processes more complex than anything in modern industry. Perhaps the most impressive aspect is how Chinese engineers made their thorium reactor essentially accident-proof. Traditional nuclear reactors require constant human intervention to stay safe. Operators have to monitor hundreds of systems and make split-second decisions to prevent disasters. China's thorium reactor is designed with what engineers call passive safety. The laws of physics automatically prevent dangerous situations from developing. If the reactor gets too hot, the molten salt expands and slows the nuclear reaction. If there's a power failure, gravity automatically drains the molten salt into safe storage tanks. The reactor literally cannot melt down because the fuel is already molten. It cannot explode because there's no high-pressure water system. It cannot release significant radiation because the molten salt traps radioactive particles better than any containment system ever built. Traditional nuclear reactors create radioactive waste that remains dangerous for 10,000 years, longer than recorded human history. This waste 
has to be stored in specially designed facilities and monitored constantly to prevent environmental contamination. China's thorium reactor produces waste that becomes harmless in about 300 years. That's still a long time, but it's manageable within normal human timescales. Even more importantly, thorium reactors produce about 99% less waste than uranium reactors. The small amount of waste they do produce can actually be recycled into the reactor as fuel. Chinese engineers are developing closed-loop systems where virtually nothing gets thrown away. Everything gets reused until it's completely consumed. China's plan to deploy these reactors in their western deserts is absolutely brilliant from a strategic perspective. These regions have been economic backwaters for centuries. Too hot, too dry, and too remote for traditional industrial development. But thorium reactors thrive in exactly these conditions. They don't need water for cooling, so drought isn't a problem. They're small and modular, so they can be transported to remote locations. They produce so much electricity that they can power energy-intensive industries that would be impossible anywhere else. China is essentially planning to transform their least valuable real estate into their most strategically important industrial regions. They're talking about thorium-powered manufacturing cities in the middle of deserts, connected to the rest of the world by high-speed rail and ultra-high voltage power lines. The global nuclear industry is scrambling to respond to China's breakthrough. Companies that spent billions developing traditional uranium reactor technology are suddenly facing the possibility that their investments could become obsolete overnight. International nuclear regulators are struggling to develop safety standards for thorium reactors. The technology is so different from traditional reactors that existing regulations don't even apply. China is essentially writing the rulebook as they go, giving them enormous influence over international standards. Some countries are proposing international cooperation on thorium research hoping to prevent China from achieving a complete technological monopoly. But China has already invested so heavily in thorium technology that catching up would require other nations to spend hundreds of billions of dollars over decades. China's timeline for scaling up thorium technology is incredibly aggressive. Their 10 megawatt demonstration plant by 2030 is just seven years away. If they hit that target, they'll prove that thorium reactors can operate reliably at commercial scale. The really ambitious goal is those 100 plus megawatt commercial reactors. Each one would be a massive industrial complex capable of powering entire cities while producing hydrogen, desalinated water, and high temperature industrial heat for manufacturing. Chinese energy planners are already identifying sites for dozens of these facilities. They're talking about thorium reactor clusters that could produce more electricity than the Three Gorges Dam, the world's largest hydroelectric project. Here's what makes this story absolutely fascinating from a geopolitical perspective. What happens when one country has access to essentially unlimited clean electricity while everyone else is still burning fossil fuels? China could offer thorium reactor technology to other countries, creating energy dependencies that could influence international relationships for decades. Countries that adopt Chinese thorium technology would rely on Chinese expertise, Chinese fuel processing capabilities, and Chinese technical support. Alternatively, China could keep the technology to themselves, using their energy advantage to dominate global manufacturing and industrial production. Imagine trying to compete economically with a country that has access to electricity costs near zero. China's thorium breakthrough is potentially the beginning of a complete reorganization of global economic power. In just seven years, when their 10 megawatt demonstration plant comes online, we'll know if this technology can truly deliver on its revolutionary promise. But here's the question that should keep every world leader awake at night. What happens when China starts offering this technology to other countries? Which nations will they choose as partners? And which ones will be left behind in the fossil fuel age? Because the decisions made in the next five years could determine the balance of global power for the next century. The thorium revolution has begun and China just fired the first shot in what could become the most important technological race of our lifetime. Think this thorium reactor breakthrough is mind-blowing. Wait until you see what happens when China decides to build a bridge taller than the Eiffel Tower in one of the most dangerous mountain ranges on Earth. We're talking about a structure so impossibly high that commercial jets have to change their flight paths to avoid it. The Milau Bridge in France was supposed to be the engineering limit. China just shattered that limit and built something 300 feet taller. 
check it out right here.